Hello everyone. In the topic of agriculture for UPSC prelims 2021, these are the various areas from which I'm expecting questions. In this, we will be discussing specifically about trends. Now, what are these trends? We will be speaking from the perspective of uh, economic survey. Secondly, we will be talking about the agricultural census data and a few schemes and policies. And of course, the core concepts which include uh, the discussion about GMOs, genetically modified crops, transgenic crops, what is the difference between them, BT, cotton, etc. I will not be comprehensively covering everything like the unique features, GI tags, etc., which are trivial information, the various schemes. Uh, the point of focus will be the trends and the core concepts of biotechnology in agriculture. So this will be the focus. To begin with, what does our economic survey say? Economic survey this time says that there is an increase of the share of agriculture in gross value added. Now, you have to know the difference between GBA and GDP. Please go through the definitions once again. What does this survey say? Out of the 100%, 20% is the gross value added of agriculture. So this is the first time since 2003-2004 that we have touched the 20% mark. And last year's economic growth was actually triggered by agricultural sector. It was driven by agricultural sector. And it is very minimum. But however, agricultural sector usually remains between 17 to 19% from 2003-2004. So there is a lot of uh, scope for asking questions which are based on trends. And this particular trend is brought to your notice. Please note, consistently decreasing. Yes, we have one such parameter in the last five years. The gross value added for the whole of economy has been decreasing since 2016-2017. Moving on to the next fact, there are certain trivial information from various sources, which is the state which has the largest production capacity of rice. It is West Bengal, not UP or Punjab or Andhra Pradesh. Please note this point. Second point, wheat, which state produces the maximum amount of wheat? Again, it is not Punjab, it is Uttar Pradesh. However, why are Uttar Pradesh farmers not so rich when you compare with the farmers in Punjab? We will have a look at that in the next few slides. The third point, maize. Karnataka is the largest producer. Generally, when we are talking about agriculture, the per capita availability of almost all the food crops increased since 1951 or after independence. If there is one crop where we are facing a shortage, then that is pulses. Even though the availability as a whole increased it is still not sufficient for the growing population because in 1951 22 kgs is the per capita availability of pulses and in 2018 it is 20 kgs the largest producer of pulses is Madhya Pradesh now if you take a look at the whole area that is under cultivation rice and wheat together occupy 40 percent of the area with rice occupying somewhere around 23 percent and if you compare it with the pulses, it is just 15% of the area. So that is the reason why we are talking about protein security because pulses are a source of protein where carbohydrate is the focus of the national food security schemes or all the uh, schemes that we are uh, witnessing, whether it is MSP, the focus has always been on carbohydrates, that is rice and wheat. We have to move towards protein security. This is one more uh, aspect which is time and again discussed in articles. Moving on. Recently, our Prime Minister announced that uh, there will be a national mission for increasing the production of palm oil seeds. The reason is, oil seeds, uh, even though we have a huge demand, we nearly import 50% of the oil seeds or 50% of the oil demand, edible oil, the cooking oil which we use, is not produced in India, which is a huge burden to the exchequer. Keeping this in mind, our Prime Minister announced this national mission. However, there are again controversies regarding the impact of uh, palm plantations in Northeast because if you take a look at the experiences in Indonesia, it is affecting biodiversity. Just keep this point in mind. Now, coming back to the trivial aspects, which state has the largest uh, oil seeds production? Again, it is Madhya Pradesh along with uh, pulses production. The second state is Rajasthan and the third one is 
Maharashtra. On a national level, if you take a look at the uh, production, soya bean has the highest, followed by groundnut. And third one is rap seed and mustard. Now, mustard, is this a Kharif crop or a Rabi crop? Please post your answers in the comment section below. So, these are the various facts that you have to know. The next aspect is agricultural R&D. In India, the percentage of amount spent on R&D is very less. That is 0.3 to 0.4% of agricultural GDP. Please note this point. It is not the total GDP. It is just the agricultural GDP. Whereas in developed countries, it is uh, very high. Almost 3% is the uh, amount spent on R&D. In China itself, uh, it is somewhere around 0.6 to 0.7%. And there are certain countries like Indonesia, which almost spend 1% of their agricultural GDP on R&D. So these are the points that you have to note. The next crop that is continuously in use is cotton. So the prerequisite that I'm not explaining here and assuming that you're knowing is the soils in which cotton is uh, abundantly grown. What are the conditions of growth for cotton? In which states would you find them? The fact that you have to know here is cotton has uh, in India, the amount of area that is under cotton constitutes for the highest area in the world. Yet, we are the second highest producer. This says that our yield is very low. Very low in relation to the amount of area that we are uh, producing cotton. So, we have to focus on increasing the yield. That is what uh, we have to understand. Now, with respect to MSP, another fact you have to know is MSP is declared every season for two varieties, one medium staple, long staple. So what is the nodal agency which is dealing with the procurement of uh, cotton at MSP? It is the Cotton Corporation of India. It is under the Ministry of Textiles, not Agricultural Ministry. Please focus on this point. Now comes the controversial topic of GM crops. So we have a cotton variety which is a very successful one called the BT cotton, which is a genetically modified crop. So the purpose was to contain ballworm attacks on cotton and there was a lot of debate about the point whether this is a success or a failure. If you take a look at the statistics, it is actually success because uh, the yield of GM crops or the BT cotton has increased and the insecticide usage has considerably reduced. Because of this reason, you will find that the usage of BT cotton has actually increased in our country. Moving on, the next thing that you have to note is the herbicide tolerant BT cotton. Is this actually uh, legal in our country? Not yet. Yet you will find that a lot of farmers are already using this variety. Similarly, you have the BT brinjal, which is not allowed in our country, but is seeing tremendous results in our neighboring country, Bangladesh, who went ahead and uh, cultivated this crop despite a lot of controversy. The next thing that you have to note here is Another trivial fact, Punjab Agricultural University is the first university that came up with the production of a BT cotton variety which can be reused. Similarly, another genetically modified crop, DMH11, which is a GM mustard variety which is created by the Delhi University. The reason why we have to go for this uh, genetical method is because the conventional methods are very difficult uh, because self-pollination is the nature of production or reproduction for mustard. So it is difficult to go through the conventional methods. So these are the points that you have to know. Now a question which tests your concept. What is the difference between a transgenic crop, a genetically engineered crop and cloning? So all this come under the larger circle of GMOs and transgenic is one such variety. Now, when you are saying BT cotton is a genetically modified crop, is it genetically engineered or is it a transgenic crop? Remember, in common parallels, we might be uh, using this uh, interchangeably, but they have very specific meaning. BT cotton is actually a transgenic variety because in transgenic variety, what we are trying to do is, like in the case of BT cotton, we are taking one particular gene and introducing it into the cotton crop we are trying to introduce a novel feature which is not there and this novel feature was to mute the effect of ballworm on the cotton crop but when you are talking about genetic engineering it is like uh, surrogacy you must have watched 
the recent movie Mimi. So it is like the genes from plant one, the genes from plant two, they will be taken together and they will be artificially engineered. Focus on this term engineered and they will be introduced in a new variety or new seed, the third one. So it is artificially engineered, it is created. So that is the difference between transgenic and genetically engineered. All the genetically modified crops need not be transgenic, but all the transgenic crops are definitely genetically modified. Just remember this picture, you will not forget it. The next thing that you have to note here is the data from the agricultural census. The first point, it is not by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, but it is by the Ministry of Agriculture and Family Welfare. Is this the first one? No, it is the 10th one. It started in 1971, which is the first time which it came out. And every five years, we will be having a agricultural census. Now, the first point you have to notice, what is the purpose of this? Any policy with respect to agriculture should be data driven, not just agriculture. In fact, any governance should have a datum or a baseline from which you have to improve. That will be known only when you have a survey. So in this, we'll be talking about operational holdings. As per the definition of operational holdings, you have to remember the purpose of this agricultural census, even though it is talking about various dimensions, the broad philosophy or the broad objective of understanding the status of agriculture on a broader level, that is at an economic level. So if you take only those operational holdings, which depend on title, that is ownership, then you will obviously be missing a lot because a huge number of farmers do not own the land that they're telling. So the first thing that you have to note here is the definition of operational holdings is irrespective of the ownership and title. It is not dependent on the uh, title. So the first trend, it says that the total area which is under operation for agriculture is decreasing, but the amount of uh, operational holdings in the name of females is increasing. So this trend implies feminization, feminization of agriculture. So UPSC might ask a question that feminization of agriculture is increasing according to uh, Agri Census 2015. Yes, that is true. However, it does not mean that women are empowered. It only means that women are taking the burden of this cumbersome job where men are actually migrating in search of better jobs. So if you take a look at the number of people who are tilling this operational holdings, UP has the highest number of people. At the same time, you have to remember that the same survey says that number of operational holdings is increasing, whereas operated area is decreasing. This means that land fragmentation is happening land fragmentation that is on smaller land more and more number of people are trying to uh, cultivate crops and attain some economic subsistence but that is not sustainable agriculture only works on scale that is the structural problem of our agricultural systems so this is the fact that you have to remember operational area is decreasing but the number of people who are tilling the land has highest uh, in, is highest in Uttar Pradesh state. That is the reason why they are not as rich as the farmers in Punjab. Moving on. Another fact that you have to know, number of operational holdings is increasing in which state? The highest operational holdings you will find in Ma Madhya Pradesh and the lowest in Manipur. At the same time, when operational holding is increasing and operated area is decreasing, what does it mean? It only means that our average size of operational holding is continuously decreasing. And the poorest size you can find in Kerala. And the largest size you will find in Nagaland. Now, what does this tell you about the implementation of the fifth and sixth schedule? Just think about it. What is the importance of PESA? What is the importance of uh, forest? Rights Act of 2006 in this context. What does it tell you about the state of Nagaland? Just think about it. Another fact that you have to remember is that 86% of the farmers in our country are small and marginal. What is the definition of small and marginal? Less than two hectares of land. Most of you already know this. Uh, in the channel also, it has been discussed a lot of times. 
so just a reminder that you will have to remember this fact as well so these are the facts that you will have to remember from agricultural census and coming to the last important topic in this trends chapter you will have to remember the specific objectives of our agri export policy usually the numbers are not really important from prelims perspective but just remember this india constitutes just 2% of the world trade despite being the one of the most agro diverse countries or agro diverse lands across the world we just produce 2.15% of the world trade's value so in 2018 we came up with an agri export policy uh, which had an objective of doubling farmers income the point that you have to notice what are the agricultural commodities which have highest exports and export value just go through these products rice especially especially the basmati rice that is why we have been uh, competing with pakistan for certain basmati varieties gi tag as well because it gives us more value also at the same time marine products are one area where we can significantly ramp up our share across the world so we have to focus on this as well after 2015 the topic of agricultural export policy has been time and again been in news and apeda as well as empeda apeda is agricultural products and empeda is for marine products just go through the basics of this bodies whether they are statutory bodies or just executive bodies you just have to know certain details about them what are the various schemes that these uh, organizations came up with for export uh, promotion these are the points you have to know and lastly for logistic assistance the government came up with a uh, transport and marketing assistance scheme for specified agri products so in this what is done international trade is uh, actually encouraged through this whatever component that exporter has to bear for logistics that will be assisted by the government to certain extent how much it is not really important just identify the theme and remember that it is about international logistics so i hope you found this helpful i'll be posting the uh, link of this video along with the pdf on hindu highlights you can just search for the key term agriculture if you want to go through the uh, various topics that are in news for the last 2 years through, from newspapers on this group that's it for now thank you